Now that we've seen how vectors a, b, and c can be added together to form the resultant vector r, which is equal to a plus b plus c, we're going to see how the vectors a, b, and c may be replaced with their components in the x and y direction. So we'll remove vectors a, b, and c, and we'll replace them with their components in the x and y direction. Notice for vector b, I can draw the b, the x component in the x direction and put in the value b sub x to represent the x component of vector b. The y component goes along the vertical axis or the y axis and I can call this vector b sub y. Its magnitude is given by the number b sub y. Its direction is given by the arrowhead which points up so we know that it's a positive positive vector. So once we have vector b sub x and b sub y, they replace vector b because b sub x plus b sub y when added vectorially are the same thing as vector b. Likewise, we can do the same thing for vector c. The x component of vector c, however, is directed in the negative direction. In this way, we write the component nevertheless as a positive number down here. Later, when we add them in, in when we add them up, we'll realize that this is in fact pointing in the negative direction, and hence we'll give it a negative sign later. In the y direction, the vector um, c sub y can be shown to be this way, and we'll designate that as c sub y. Once we have vectors c sub x and c sub y in there, the sum of those two vectors equals vector c, and so we don't need vector c anymore. Now notice how we've uh, added up vectors b and c to form their components. Vector a, however, does not have a y component. It only has an x component, and so we will replace vector a with an x component that we'll draw in like this. So this will be vector a sub x, pointing along the x direction, and we'll throw vector a away. So now you can see the sum of all the components still adds up to give us the vector r. Another insight can be gained by putting in a coordinate axis. Let's put a coordinate system at the tail of vector a. We'll run it along the x-axis, and we'll run another one along the y-axis. So now we have an xy coordinate system centered at the tail of vector r. Next, what we'll do is we'll add up all the vectors in the x direction by putting them. A vector has a magnitude and direction, but it doesn't necessarily have a place. So we could move vector c sub x down to here. We could move vector b sub y over to here. Let's put the labels down here, too. And now we can see that the net, for, uh, the net sum of all the vectors in the x direction, we go all the way out to the end of vector b and then back in along vector c sub x, and then go vertically b sub y and c sub y, those add up to be, again, equal to the vector r. We can gain even further insights by moving them all the way over to the y axes and setting them in like that. This would be b sub y, this would be c sub y. Remember, of course, that a sub y is 0. Now we can see in a very interesting way that the components of vector r, when I lay them in here, are equal to the sum of the components in the x and y directions. And that's a, that's a very nice insight.